Wilbon, I'll go to you first. How should Dame Lillard feel today about his future with the Blazers? I'm sure he's, well, about his future with the Blazers. That's right. They're not going to get rid of Dame Lillard. I mean, you know how hard it is, particularly for a small market team, to acquire a superstar. Dame Lillard is a superstar. He's, he's in my top three. After you set LeBron aside, Steph Curry and Dame Lillard are the two players, and we're adding Luka soon, that I would pay whatever amount of money to see, all right? So you get rid of Dame Lillard. No, you better find people to put around Dame Lillard and maybe a defensive coordinator. I'm not saying you got to let Terry Stotts go. There are defensive aces. There always are in this league that can be on your bench. You better find one of those, or you're going to have to find a couple of players that you, whether it's through free agency, and I know it's not a destination, or trade, or draft, keep Dame Lillard, figure out how to make that ensemble around him stronger. Perk, you think that Damian Lillard could get out of Portland if he wants to? Or do you think he's stuck there? He, he needs to. If he knew better, he'll do better. And here's why. Damian Lillard has been carrying this organization for the last eight years, okay? And he's been doing everything he's supposed to do as a superstar. You know what this situ situation reminds me of? Of Kevin Garnett when he was in Minnesota. And guess what? They're at the same point of their career, same age, where Kevin KG had been carrying the Minnesota Timberwolves. And what did KG say in his Hall of Fame speech? The one regret that I had is that I didn't come to Boston earlier. And I don't want Damian Lillard to have that same regret. It's time for him to move on because no one is going to Portland. That is not eye candy to the uh, basketball world. Guys, I've been expressing the same sentiments for the last two years or so. I spoke to Damian Lillard a couple of hours ago. He was absolutely devastated, uh, virtually speechless because of what happened last night. He said, I gave it my all. I put my heart into this. I wasn't casting aspersions at the Portland Trailblazers, any of my teammates, or anybody else. I'm just sick of this. This hurts so damn much because I give my all to it. And that was all that he had to say on this matter. I feel bad for him because I don't see any marquee free agents coming to Portland to help him deliver a chip. And that's why I think, Will Bond, he's got to find a way to get the hell out of there. That's just my personal opinion. He's an incredible asset. You could potentially move him and get tremendous assets in return for him. But I think him staying there, I don't know if he's going to get what he wants. Or you Portland, can get some we... assets and put right. them around him. Let management that's true. do the you same so? work, resources, get some people, put them around. You get rid of Dame Lillard, right. as Shaq once said about Sacramento after they lost, they're going back to expansionism. That's where Portland's <laughs> going to be for a while if they let Dame Lillard go. Man, keep Dame Lillard. If you're, hey, man hey, if you're management, you better find a way. Hey, Perk, check it out. Both of us got to stand down, not only because Wilbon might be right, but also because that's a pretty damn good Shaq ex uh, imitation. That was pretty good, Wilbon. <laughs> I got to give it to you. With the Lakers for a second, Wojo, because LeBron wasn't the only superstar who exited the playoffs last, last night. Actually, I'm moving on from the Lakers because I want you to listen to a disappointed Damian Lillard last night when asked about Portland's offseason changes. Listen to this. To come up short in the first round, you know, our season to end on our home floor is disappointing. Uh, that's that's where, that's as far as I'm, I am with it right now. You know, I'm not really thinking about none of the other <laughs> change or whatever, man. You know, we'll see what happens. But um, you know, I haven't even thought thought that far out. Little also posting this on Instagram using lyrics from the late great Nipsey Hussle. How long should I stay dedicated? How long till opportunity meets preparation? Woj, what will this offseason look like for Lillard and the Blazers? Hey, Stephen, I, I think the focus right now in the short term for the Blazers is on Coach Terry Stotts. He just finished his ninth season uh, with the Blazers. Second all-time winningest coach in franchise history, but this team has fallen short of getting out of the first round in four of the last five years. And defensively, this is a team that pretty consistently has been in the bottom few in the league, certainly among the elite offensively. Uh, and so I think it may be difficult for the Blazers to move forward with Terry Stotts. They're having those conversations right now. But I do think there was a belief in Portland that with a beat-up Denver team that was missing several of their key players – that they had the talent perhaps uh, to be more competitive and to perhaps maybe got getting, getting, gotten out of that first round.
They may have a difficult time moving forward, but we never have a difficult time moving forward because you always providing us information that lets us do that. Thanks a lot, Woj. Always appreciate you big time. Thank you Thank so you, much. Thank you, Steven. I'm looking at you right now. You're averaging nearly 26 a game, seven assists a game. Obviously, everybody knows how big time you are, but they look back to last season and what happened against New Orleans in the postseason. Y'all got swept. Talk to me about what this last year has been like for you personally coming off that kind of playoff loss last season. Oh, uh, it was a struggle. You know, like, we got the three seed. You know, it was our first time since I've been in the league having home court. And going into the playoffs, we was excited. Like, man, we really got to, we got action. You know, we can do something. And you go into the first round, you get swept. Um, me being uh, the main guy on the team, I didn't play well. So, I mean, I knew that everybody was going to come down on me. I knew the, it was going to come on me. And uh, I think one of the, the good things about it is I know I can handle it. When we talk about league MVP candidates, we talk about Giannis in Milwaukee, Greek Freak, we talk, obviously talk about James Harden. Yeah. We've talked about LeBron before he went down, got injured. Not only do you look at your numbers and see 26, seven, you see a 50 win season by the Portland Trail Blazers. Nurkic has gone down, CJ has gone down. And if you look at your career numbers, they're not just damn good numbers, they're actual Hall of Fame numbers. So have we reached a point where it's time for us to start talking about Damian Lillard in terms of recognizing the fact that we haven't given you enough credit? Do you think about things like that at all? I used to a lot more. Now I just, I look at it and, you know, I talk to, you know, one of our, the, our coaches on our staff, one of our older coaches, Dale Osborne, and Sometimes me and him, like after practice, I'll be shooting and we'll sit there for an hour and we'll talk and I'll be like, man, like when I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, you know, Giannis, rightfully so, like he having a great season, the number one team in the league. James, obviously what he's doing is unbelievable, averaging 36. Like nobody did that since Jordan, I don't think. So like they getting the credit and the recognition that they deserve, but I always ask him like, why? like. We winning games. I don't, I'm not sitting out games for rest and all this other stuff. I'm showing up every night. I don't make up no excuses and all this stuff. I just go get the job done. And I, I produce night after night after night after night, year after year after year. And so it's just not viewed the same as when somebody else is doing it. And what conclusion did you come to as to why that is? Why do you think that's the case? I'm really not sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, people always say, man, were well, you playing in Portland? And, you know, all this other stuff, but um, I'm not the only person that's producing in a small market. Knowing you the way that I do, one would think the player in your position would say, all right, I'm in a small market. So a New York or LA, like somebody like me constantly brings up, <laughs> yeah, and, and to your credit, you always say, stop, stop, stop. I love Portland, I love Portland. Yeah. You don't ever mention, you've never mentioned, you've never demanded a trade. You've never thought about moving on like so many of these other marquee players have talked about moving on from their respective teams to sort of, sort of join one another. Why haven't you ever done that? Or thought about doing that? Uh, I mean, it's, for me, I, I love what my situation is. You know, I don't take, I don't take my position for granted. I know that, you know, this is the organization that drafted me. Um, They've always done right by me. And um, just the, the investment into the community that I play for, you know, the relationships that I've built, and uh, you know, what we have, the environment that we've created. Um, I'm just hooked to that. You know, I'm, I'm committed to that. And uh, it's for me, just my teammates, the relationships, my coaches, our training staff, like when we go to work every day, it's a great time. And you know, I, I would hate to, um, I guess make a decision based off what everybody else thinks I should do and then I go somewhere else and you can't have that environment back. You know, you can't turn back. So it's like, I value that, you know, to that that high of a level to where it's like, man, you know what, I'm, I'm willing to live with whatever result I get out of, you know, being committed to, you know, what we've created. So with that being said, Damian Lillard is one of those dudes that's in position to sign one of those big time max deals this summer. <laughs> Is it safe to say you ain't thinking about going anywhere else? Why would I be? I mean, I don't even think it makes sense at this point, especially like I said, when the relationship with me and, and the Trailblazers has been what it's been, 
um, how I feel about the people that I work with every day, and mm-hmm. then that type of that type of opportunity, that yeah. type of type of money. You know, I think it's it's so many other things you got to take into consideration. Mm-hmm. Um, like I got a kid, I got a family, like I got people that's you know not dependent on me, but people whose lives I can I can change. You know, I can make a difference in the place I grew up. You know, it's a lot of things that. Um, can be changed or can be impacted based on, you know, my one decision. You got players recruiting to their respective franchises. You trying to recruit anybody to Portland? I mean, Are you that kind of guy that you when, get on the phone, pick up the phone, try to get people to come to Portland? I mean, I, I watch, I'll say this, I watch pretty much every game. Like, if it's a game day for us, I'm getting to the arena early and I'm watching games on the screens. There's five games on or whatever. After the game, I go watch other games. If we're not playing, I'm on league pass flipping through every game so I'm very um aware of a lot of players in the league you know even guys that aren't stars or um, main guys on teams um so I think everybody watches in like okay I really like what that guy can do but as far as the stars when when guys are free agents the people that I like I'm you know I'm definitely gonna have a conversation with them I don't know if I would call it recruiting but right. it's like man what's what's up you know do you feel that you're one of those guys, those elite guys in this league at this point that guys should clamor